think I think I ought to start with some sort of like control pod for it. the 
real small stuff yet. It's right on there though. I'm gonna go with stock. Oh, I can make those. Okay. I think this is how I'm gonna go with this. Make it some sort of five engine cluster deal. knowledge of this having monoprop only versus 20 I think I'll have to take these so that I can then put some of these at the top some sort of aerodynamic something on them. I'm gonna go with the Atlas. Go. Yeah. That don't look half bad. That don't look half bad at all. Five engines going. I mean, it's it's less than terrible. I can at least say that. I do, however, want to get a couple test fires in, maybe a test flight or two before I put a whole lot of weight on there. Coupler. Just 
for having some sort of weight up here. here for me. Alright, so that being the root part, I can work from there. Don't need anything super fancy. Not sure that's going to supply enough power. Point 
three. Yeah, I really don't think it's going to put out enough power. How is that thing only putting out 0.3 per second? Do all of these only put out? I don't know, it puts out 1, 0.1, 0.2. I think 0.3 might actually be on the higher end. Wow. Not sure that I can get this to fit in here, but I'm going to try. Ah. Yeah, it's just going to it's going to be just a wee bit too big. I think so will that. a little bit of monocrop in these. Monocrop because I don't think any other fuel is going to be right for it.
pretty sure I need... Oh. Oh. Freaking awesome. Okay. I still want to put a, at least some sort of dedicated radio on here. squeeze this on in here. I think I can some sort of way. Save that as a sub assembly. Save. And in fact, let me open that booster I just built. Because I don't need that. Actually, I will keep that. Cause I think I want to throw some sort of like kick stage in here. So there's that, and I will throw another engine in here just to make sure that you get to orbit. really convinced that we need all that. I think with that kick stage I should have plenty of uh, plenty of oomph to get up there.
I don't really like the shape of any of those. That'll work. So we're coming in at half the weight to just under 200 parts. And still thrust to weight ratio of 1.6. So that's not bad. In fact, that's pretty freaking good. And those go down lower than engine bells. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, before I close all of those, I want to throw a little bit of extra equipment in each one. So there's that. Battery as well. First one checks out good. This one will fly. Let me double check staging one last time. Those, those. And that is why you check staging. To catch things like that. That's not supposed to come off for a while. That never fires.
take three opening these. hitting those. Alright. I believe I'm good to go. Did spell expedition wrong. Whoops. Alright, so save that. Let me hide my shame. I also wanted to delete these test planes because they're freaking useless. Alright, so this should be go up, fire kick stage, and I should be able to fire out each one of the satellites there. And I'm hoping, 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 hoping that that should be plenty for me to get to orbit. Or at least get this upper part so close that I can then manage orbit with those. So save one last time, overwrite and start building that thing. Crap, one thing I wanted to do was check the weight of the cargo there. That way I can put a simulated weight on the other one. So I need to throw 9 tons worth of weight on top of the other one. So VAB, rename that thing. And of course, I would just fail at typing again. Alright, edit. I need to throw nine tons on top of this thing. Hey, 
Hey, what's up, big lizard? I'm currently trying to, at the same time, develop a booster that can be reused and a way to deploy communication satellites. This is the test one. I'm going to throw some weight on it so that I know the other one can handle it. You ever played Kerbal Space Program before? You know what you're looking at, or nah? might not be able to tell by looking at it or watching me, but I actually have a thousand hours in it. I just, I'm, I'm terrible at video games. It doesn't also help that I modded this one pretty extensively so that it's kind of difficult. That's close enough to nine tons. Well, that's going to be the test booster. Uh, so we'll save that, save the edits. I kind of screwed myself with this playthrough, or with, with, with this career, because I made it so that I couldn't revert any of the flights. Oh, I feel you on the War Thunder. I like War Thunder too, but it's so grindy that I, I can't. I can't make myself play it a whole lot. I love the whole World War II and dogfighting thing, but I, I just cannot force myself to grind that much. Oh. You've probably gotten further into the tree than I have. Uh, I think I only like just unlocked uh, like the P-51 Mustang. I wish I had the F-4. That thing is fast. Not even gonna lie. Whew! 4,000. I don't know about that. Not even gonna lie though. The grind is so bad, it really makes me want to just buy some of the faster ones just so I don't have to grind. I know it's kind of fallen right into their trap though. I really wish game developers would stop putting so much grind into their games, because it it's fun at first, but when you're like when you're looking at it saying something like, "Oh, I've got four thousand more hours, and then I'll get this," it it unmotivates me to play it. Uh, I think I did. I think I've got the other version of the uh, P thirty eight as well. That's the uh, dual fuselage plane, right? It's got the two engines and you sit in the middle. I know I've got the P... F yeah, yeah. I, I remember seeing that one when I was really young thinking, man, that's a cool freaking plane. I think that actually might be like the plane that I do my best in. I suck so bad at the game that I've kind of just gone for like doing bombing runs because any other time I'll just get shot down. I 
I really want to unlock one of the jets. Just just for the sheer speed that you can get. I feel like the game plays a whole lot differently. Uh, you can unlock the jets as well, doesn't it? Booster is frickin' ripping. It is doing wonderfully. Oh, the air to air missiles. I feel like that would just make me feel like I suck even more. Because then I would for sure have no reason to not hit the enemy. Because they'd lock on, don't they? Yeah, I feel like I'd have no reason to not hit the enemy, and I'd, I'd probably just kind of start feeling bad. <laughs> I ought to do a stream of, of War Thunder, because I do like the game. This is an awesome booster I've made too. It's working freaking wonderfully. Is it broken? I didn't even know they had the Harrier in the game. God, Kerbal's making some awful noises. Ah. Can you do the VTOL landing stuff too? Because I feel like that might... Well, it would make you a really slow target. It would probably really make it easy to like just light up a landing strip and kill everybody on the ground. I can see how you, how you would say that that is broken. Oh, crap. I don't think I put parachutes on this one. Although, Harrier would probably be the one to go when, go for when you're doing the, uh, the airstrip takeover ones, wouldn't it? Since you can just sit there, hover, and light everyone up. Alright, I'm sorry for the noise, but I have to use the RCS here. I will turn Kerbal down just a bit more. Are they not really useful for, like, any ground attack at all? Because that's... That's kind of how they're used in real life, isn't it, for ground attack? Because they can get the real slow speed and just really light people up. I'm probably not going to manage to to land this thing. I'm not sure it's got enough fuel. Nah. Well, hell, it sounds like it'd be, like, my plane of choice. Since I suck with everything else. Ground attack's about the only thing that I am halfway useful at on War Thunder. Might be able to get this thing safely on the ground. Oh, something exploded. Another engine exploded. Hey, I didn't lose the whole thing. That is amazing. Oh, I 
and I've probably lost the whole thing just there. Just there. Really? I'd imagine the 30 millimeter would be like the weapon of choice against tanks. I mean, the 30 millimeters. Another stupid question: Do they have the A10 in the game yet? Because I, I'm pretty sure the A10 uses a 30 millimeter uh, in the front of it. Uh, I tell. I got a question for you because I've not really been able to get real far into the game. Uh, how are like the modern uh, vehicles and weapons of the game? Because I I think I'd have a whole hoot to F14 would be freaking awesome, but I think I'd have a hoot rolling around in a in an Abrams just lighting people up. Have they, like, actually said that they're putting the F-14 in the game? Man, I, I kind of have to play tanks, just because play, playing with the planes too long awesome f-15 or f-14 that that will be pretty cool but playing with the planes too long makes me want to just quit the game and not go back for a few months maybe i've just not done enough of their practices or something like that but the sad thing is like i really do like planes and the science around planes and all that I just, I cannot dogfight to save my life. Quite happy with how well that one worked. I can never, like, straight just drop it and never come back to it. I'm sure there, there will always be a day that I come back to it. It's just, I don't know, the grind's too much for me. I, I'm really impatient, I guess. I do really enjoy War Thunder. Especially some of, like, the goofier game modes. I can definitely feel you on never being able to quit a game, though. Like, I could probably never quit Kerbal Space Program. I'm not counting going to the second one as quitting it. You know what, man? I I feel like you've like piqued my interest in War Thunder all over again. So here before too long, I probably will end up doing a War Thunder stream. All right. Um, got parachutes on this one. Comsats in the top. Got a little kick stage there. We should be good to go. Launching off the pad. Man, I I always try to intercept the bombers, but I really I I, I can never stay focused long enough to actually get up to their level, and then intercept one, and then fly, and then go for another one. I, 
I will say, almost every time I've been killed, it is by one of the BF 109s. That's a German aircraft, isn't it? You know, I feel like the Germans really got a head start on the whole aircraft design thing, at least in like World War One and Two, just because they kind of started working on it before everyone else. <laughs> yeah, they they kind of did skip them, huh? Well, no, they didn't skip them, because the Red Baron was German, wasn't he? Although, he had a, a triplane, wasn't it? It was three wings instead of two. Fuck, you might be right. They might have skipped biplanes. Go ahead and throw the fins off here. Save it as much weight as I can. Well, USA has the uh, P-26 when you start. It's not a biplane. I mean, it's got fixed landing gear, but it technically isn't a biplane. I actually really do kind of like the P-26, because it, it flies really nicely, and it's really, like, not hard to handle or anything like that, but, uh, it just sucks compared to everything else. You're focused on the wrong part. I had a momentary ah moment. Okay. Now I've definitely got to get these open and get these tossed out. should hopefully all shoot up and out. Yes. Please, none of you bump into each other and damage. Oh. 
Oh, wrong button. Don't know why there are whale noises in space. You gonna deploy these? Uh Hey, thanks for the follow too, man. Ah. Uh, I'll that's another thing about War Thunder is I just I cannot figure out like what I should and shouldn't be shooting at. I'll practically go for any and everything that that flies near me, which I know is the the worst thing. <laughs> I really ought to do a Fallout stream too, but Bethesda kind of killed my my love of Fallout with Fallout 76. Uh, what? Oh, uh, crap. I think those RCS engines require liquid fuel. Uh, I should have looked at that. Now we just got four of these just floating out here, going to crash back into, into Kerbin. For no reason. Wasted all that money. <laughs> I can't even get the... I can't even get the solar panels to deploy on that one. Because they're broken. Well, that's, that's orbiting in a very weird way. I guess let's just see how these re-enter, because there's nothing I can do to, to save them. Oh god, do not... Do not turn while time warp is on. That was a mistake. I should be able to at least go back and save the booster. My lord. Wait, are they about to just... Let's survive to re-entry. Holy crap. Dude, I like the F4U. I do have that. That was the first... I think one of the first uh, carrier fighters that I had. Although, I think it might just be that I think it looks cool. The only strategy I really have when I play War Thunder is to just climb really, really high, and then dive, and gun, 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 and then climb back up to safety. That's the only strategy I have. I wouldn't be amazed if this thing hits the ground and doesn't explode. I think these solar panels might be able to be used as wings. They seem to be a pretty good braking device.
There might be a few pieces that survive. There's one. There's two. Oh, yeah. That's not surviving. Well. Back to the drawing board. meant to switch to the booster to land it before switching back. So, I'm out that money now too. I promise, I promise, I know how to play this game. I'm not sure I would listen to my lies. This is another weird bug that I've had in Kerbal Space Program before, where I think it's that one that I want, where I'll come back in here and will act like I don't have any parts, but I'll have some other part right there. I'm not sure what's up with that bug. It's gone now, though. So let me go up here and edit these. I think I might actually even add a little bit of a, uh, well, hold on, delete that. Oh, I can make that bot one and a half, okay. And I, I want to add a little, like, liquid booster here. If I can find a reasonably sized fuel tank. Don't need a whole lot of fuel on it. So instead of having the fairing down there, I'm going to move the fairing up. So that, then these, and let me not be stupid, let me replace those while I'm sitting here looking at them. They do. Okay. That's where I messed up at. Tell you what, actually. Instead of trying to stick them all in there. I'll take one. And fix one and then copy it. So I need one that works on just just normal monoprop. Uh, I mean, it's bigger than I'd like. Can I make that? I can make it smaller. 
100% scale I can do. And now I copy it. Ah, oh, yeah, I forgot I had to do all kinds of weird rotation. Um, I guess I'll just pull all this out. Pull all that out, including that, and that one. And then hopefully, once I have all the satellites out, I can deorbit that whole thing too. I don't need a decoupler at the top. And those three are empty, so I just need to copy this three times. Go ahead, lizard. I'm going to throw the antenna up here. I forgot a decoupler. think I think we might be good to go what's the problem oh all right I'll drop it I'll drop it 400 centimeters for you Bring it down to there. And we'll stop the bearing there. Oh lord. Destroyed the staging that I already had set up. Alright, 
So, not that engine, that engine, those engines, and all three of those. Ah. One, two, three, and four. Those will hopefully be triggered independently. That goes with that one. Those four come down here. <clears throat> I actually want to pop a couple drogue shoots when I separate all that. Alright. Well. Save. And I'm just going to build two of these. Because I know me. Alright, and I too am going to take a short break.
Discord servers died. What do you mean? Oh, I guess the one I left up there still uh, still making stuff. Roll that one out. Hell yeah, good job. What do you mean the uh, the War, Th War Thunder servers died? Like, oh, they're offline right now? Ah. Lizard, you ever played Elite Dangerous? Is that a game that you've played? Oh. That's another game that I get way too into. The uh, recent Odyssey expansion was a lot of fun too. However, when they did launch Odyssey, that's the like on foot first person shooter part, the servers were a nightmare. I will say though, it's a lot of fun to go shooting somebody and just jetpack over them and keep blasting them. It's also nice and quiet since there's like not any air, so you don't have to worry about deafening noises. Ah, I meant to launch this when my other one was closer. If you've never seen Elite Dangerous, you should probably, I would say, you should at least take a look. It's worth it to me. Even if you don't care about doing, like, the ship stuff, just Odyssey's a, a lot of fun. Go ahead and blast the fins off. Hmm. 
not going to be able to hit to uh, change where I'm controlling from. Yeah, not going to happen. I will say, if you're not a huge fan of like space and shooters, wait to pick up Elite Dangerous until it's on sale. But for someone like me that can get nerdy about just flying around in space, it is great. thing up and coast for a bit. I'd say if you don't want to look real far, I've got a couple clips from when I was playing Elite Dangerous in the combat zones. They're not great because it wasn't running really great, but uh, some of them are pretty alright. Does it really? <coughs> You're not just trying to like outturn him, are you? Because I I've given up on turning battles in that game. fire this one as soon as we get to the horizon. Going to take some screenshots real fast. Oh god. That is not how that was supposed to work. Definitely having problems. Alright, I think we're good. Uh, not that one. I may not have thrown this up high enough. You know, it it does kind of tick me off when you'll take someone right to like three or four of your teammates and they don't do nothing. I'm not even going to lie, that does get old.
you're going to witness me failing at this again. Might as well throw them out. <laughs> that one's going to fall wonky. I guess I'm just going to take the booster back down. At least I might be able to save it. You know, Lizard, something I found to be, like, really interesting about War Thunder is you can take some of the old school, like, World War II uh, training films and apply it literally right to the game without much changing around or nothing. Like, one of the most effective tactics is to just have more altitude, bear down on them, blast them away, and then pull back up. That's one of my favorite freaking things. It's almost getting embarrassing how many times I have failed at putting satellites up into orbit. I used to fly the, uh, I think it's the A20, A20G, uh, that thing is not really great for dogfighting. But when you can bear down on somebody, or like bear down on a bomber, it'll take a wing off real fast. I'm gonna at least be able to save the booster. I think it's a like a good half of how much this thing costs to launch. Oh, there's I heard one pop. I think they all hit the ground by now. And there's the last four shoots.
there's one way I wish War Thunder. Uh, one way I wish you could play War Thunder, and then not be a complete waste of time to try, and that's torpedoing ships. Like fly down in a plane, just drop a couple torpedoes and fly away. But it's almost a waste of time to try and do that. Well, third failure, or third attempt is a failure. I guess it's a good thing I had another one getting built. Probably going to be a couple parts break when it hits the water too. The AI is pretty frickin' vicious with the with the cannons. Like the AI doing AA in War Thunder is almost impossible to beat. At least I've not found a way. Alright, I think I'm going to take this second one that I built, and when the kick stage fires, I'm going to put some SRBs on to turn it around, and hopefully that will keep it stable. That's the problem I'm having, is when the solid kick stage burns, I get all kinds of wonky. Pretty sure it's not an aerodynamic issue, because it happened in, outside of the atmosphere that time. It might be a center of thrust issue. Uh, let this load real quick, and I'll show you. Oh, I'm sure it's a control authority issue. I've got like no reaction wheels and there's not much RCS on the upper half of this. Kick stage starts right here. I mean, it's got plenty of power. I think my best bet, because I don't really have any strong reaction wheels, is to just gonna is just gonna be to throw some SRBs on the side at an angle to get it to spin. I feel like that's going to be my best bet. Something like that maybe. I think I can get away with just like two. Um, I don't know. I'm, I probably should add some sort of RCS down here. Because all this up here... Uh, has got a bunch of reaction wheels on the satellites in those. Problem is, I've got so many mods installed that it's almost difficult to find things. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to do a uh, commsat deployer where there's four of them all in one. So there's the little miniature satellite inside. Uh, two solar panels, some uh, gyros, RCS in there just a little bit just to get the uh, orbits nice and round. 
some extra antennas on the back. It, I'm still like super early career, so I'm trying to do with, do with what I have. And I put probably way too many mods into this as well. You know, that's what I that's what I say. No such thing as too many mods in this or Skyrim. Oh, dude. I tried doing a uh, real scale solar system once and ended up with, I think, 140 mods, something like that. Because I wanted the most difficult game I could possibly give myself. I will say tweak scale comes in super freaking handy. But I sometimes almost feel like I'm cheating using it. Just because you can always find a part that fits. Alright, let me check through my staging real quick. You know, that's that's kind of how I like to look at tweak scale too. They really freaking can. Uh, my computer was not happy last time I tried to do what last time I tried to do it. I really need to upgrade my CPU. Oh. There's a weird bug that I'm dealing with. Uh, I've got an i5-6400. Nothing real fancy. Uh, I think it... I'm pretty sure when I put it all together, that was like the best one I could afford. Because I kind of went a little bit overboard with the graphics card at the time. But now, I don't regret the graphics card. Because I've got the... Uh, AMD RX 480, the 8GB card, with 16 gigs of RAM, I don't really run into a whole lot of slowdown, but when I do, you can bet it's the CPU. Alright, that is good to go. I know I could probably get a little bit more out of it if I upgraded the RAM. Oh, I believe it. That's the one that I really want, is the 9700. Yeah, I've thought, I've thought about just saying screw it and upgrading to the system max because it can handle 64. And I'm sure I would make full use of it. I'm not sure you ever really need to get off. Wait a minute. Which one is this? I think that's the one that, that I just crashed. Uh, I don't think I do. What is, what is XMP? That's not a uh, an acronym that is striking anything in my brain. Ooh, ooh, shots fired. <laughs> Man, you want to talk about real addict. Uh, I recently saw some hardware for, like, racing sims that will move your seat and wheel and all that. And I priced this crap out. Oh, my... I don't think I, I, don't think I do have that enabled, but I will look into that. Uh, the piece of hardware I was talking about, though, literally like $3,500 for a cheap one. I saw some that were mind-bogglingly expensive. You know what? I think 
I think this is just going to be a test bed here. Oh, I I know it's spendy, man. I I've been trying to convince my wife to let me spend the money on a Logitech uh, racing wheel, but she keeps saying, "Why do you need to spend three thousand dollars on a controller?" <laughs> oh man, I I need to get another Hodus. Because I, I recently got really into VTOL VR. Man, that's even that's even more expensive. What are you talking about, man? <laughs> I used to be a mechanic. I know exactly how much that stuff cost. <laughs> hey, Miatas are great. They don't they're not really meant to go super freaking fast, but they can fucking hang a corner. Yeah. I used to have an RX-7 when I was in high school. They're built on the same chassis. RX-7's balanced a little bit better and has just a, just a little bit more power. Ooh. They are fast around a corner. You're not going to beat a whole, whole lot in a straight line. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's forty nine fifty one over the uh, rear. I did have a Gen two. Sounds like somebody knows the car is pretty well. Uh, it was an eighty eight, but ooh, it it was trashed the hell out. Uh, somebody had used it as a driver, like a driving instructor car. Um, right before I got it, though, dude had put a new clutch in it and a new transmission. So I was like, okay, I'm ready to go. Uh, this is actually the car I learned how to drive stick on. I was so determined to drive stick that I said, all right, I'm just going to get me a stick shift and I will make myself learn. I, I've never honestly been able to get my hands into a 12A. Uh, I've had my hands all over the 13Bs. Uh, I've not been able to get into one of the Renesis engines in the uh, RX-8s either, but I, I've not got much good to say about RX-8s. Dude, surprisingly, I did not go through a clutch. I went through a transmission not because of my own fault. Uh, I, I'm confused to this day about how about why Mazda made the U-joints on the RX-7 unserviceable. They are welded into the drive shaft, um, so when they run out of grease, you replace the drive shaft. Um, my stupid ass back in high school didn't know that, so it just fucking wore out. Eventually it broke, and the drive shaft, while moving, smacked the tail housing of the transmission and practically broke it off. So, I had to get a new transmission, but uh, not because of my own incompetence. I do wish I ran premix uh, back in the day, because I'm sure that the insides of that engine were not real happy with me. Especially because I was under the... Uh, I used to make it a saying, a red line a day keeps the carbon away. I used to be really surprised about how much, uh, like how much trouble people would give me over the startup and the shutdown procedure. How you're supposed to hold it at three grand? Oh, I I know it's about right, but uh, it wasn't happy being an '88 because at at that point it was already almost 25 years old. I think I don't know. I've probably done my math wrong. Dorito engine not happy. It really wasn't. The sad, sad thing is it wasn't an apex seal that let go on that engine. Uh, the fuel pulsation dampener is made of rubber. They put rubber in a fuel line and then put that right over the exhaust. And then they put ethanol in fuel and ethanol eats rubber. 
So eventually the ethanol ate the rubber and it just dropped gas right onto the exhaust. Literally caught fire while I was trying to teach my stepbrother how to drive stick. I, I have no idea why they designed it that way. Uh, the ethanol and the gas is to, make, to replace lead as an octane booster. I know that. I can understand that. But it's, it's so difficult to find non-ethanol mixed gas. It is ridiculously difficult. Talking about really bad design uh, reminds me of a car that my mother had, a uh, Volkswagen Touareg. Yeah, a, a lot of it is. Uh, not really in Missouri, though. Like, the sad thing is it's easier to find ethanol in where I'm at than it is to find ethanol-free gas. Dude, I've not seen a whole lot of carbs that won't kill by that won't be killed by ethanol. Uh, um, I'll say that I am close to I forty four. That's about as specific as I feel like getting. Uh, not Mac County. Tell you the truth, I'm not super sure where Mac County is. Um, I will say there is a, a large college close by. If you know the area, that should, that should probably be enough to, to get you close. Uh, I don't even know what I was doing right here. Yeah, sadly, there's not a lot of ethanol-free places. Uh, the town I'm living now, I know of one specifically that I can get ethanol-free. <clears throat> oh, I got you. I got you. I know of literally just just a single gas station in the town that I'm living where I can get ethanol-free gas. The town I used to live in, which is about a half hour, an hour away, uh, I honestly can't think of any. There's one like halfway to the next town, like about 10, 15 miles out of town uh, that I think they had ethanol free gas, but they had water in their gas too. So didn't really want to get gas from them. I really should have named that thing something different. Yeah, what's really kind of sad is, like, before I even went to tech school and learned everything, I was told that there was water in their gas, and I had seen it. And I still had people telling me, like, oh, yeah, I went to go get gas over here, and now my car's acting funny. And, of course, you got to explain to them how water is not good to have in gas, unless you're doing some crazy stuff. And even then, you don't want it in your gas. Alright, so that's the good one. So 20 days is the one that I want to keep. Tell you the truth, all, the only thing that being a mechanic really made like made a change in me. Pelican tail space plane. On mine? Oh, oh, never mind, never mind. Uh, only thing that make the uh, yeah, I, I might go might go check that out. Only thing being a mechanic changed in me though is just getting mad about bad drivers. That's it. Like, now when I see a bad driver, I just want to stop him and pull him out of the car. 
Oh, dope. I didn't know you streamed. I'll have to go check you out. Oh, oh no, I know. Trust me, I know. I'll, I would say... Oh, you're good, dog. I ain't, I ain't worried about it. It's not like I've got a thousand people watching me or nothing. Uh, I would say that I've only gotten this ugly by getting my ass kicked. Uh, tell you the truth, I'm not honestly sure I have. Or do you mean... Oh, God. Fuck semi-trucks. God, no. God, God, no. Oh, I feel you. I, I've had to work on a couple semi trucks, and that was like the worst freaking, the worst time I had. There are good people around here. Like, not gonna lie. Uh, you want to talk about some nasty trucks? Uh. There's this guy that used to come into the shop I worked at. This dude had, let me try and remember, I think it was like an 02 and 03 Dodge 3500, right? 300,000 miles on this thing and had never had the differential oil changed. And it had a limited slip rear differential. Not to mention he used it to go and like service cow hooves and shit. So it was like the most disgusting truck you can imagine. And then you pull the differential cover off, and the shop empties. Everybody in there went running out, coughing, just ugh. One of, still, to this day, holds down one of the worst smells I've ever smelled. I'm sorry, I'm getting all kinds of unfocused, not, not playing the game. I'm just sitting here talking shit. Yeah, it... It was just nasty, man. I can't even describe the smell. It smelled worse than a dead body. It really did. There, I've, I have looked and looked and tried. I've actually tried to smell something that smelled worse just so I could forget the smell. I, I can't do it. 300,000 miles, differential fluid with the slim, limited slip uh, friction modifier. Just nasty. Just terrible. That and then cow poop was falling out too. Not out of the differential, but out from under the bed and shit. I hated that truck. I really did. Here's a question for you, since you work on uh, semis. Are there semi-truck drivers that do the thing that normal car drivers do where... Everything but the driver's seat will just be trash up to the windows. Is that something that they do? Oh, God. That's sad. That's got to be more trash, too, because they got a little bit more space. Oh. Oh, that's terrible. That is... That's just the worst. About the only thing that I can say to top that would be uh, there was one guy came in with trash up to the windows and uh, then he told me that I ought to go check out his restaurant because there's really good food. Uh, I didn't have the heart to tell him. Where did I put that control module up here. I want to make sure that like I'm controlling it from something that's going to go all the way up. No, that's not it. That's battery. All right, screw it. I'm just going to go ahead and send it. 
quick run over those. Uh, yep, yeah, alright. That's really got to be like the worst thing too, is when somebody somebody says, oh yeah, you should try my cooking, and they, they're just absolutely disgusting. Feeling hopeful this time. I think it might work. Uh, I hate having to pull dead animals out of cars, and that—that that is one of the worst things. I think the dead cat in the exhaust is probably the worst I've ever heard. I feel like most everybody's had like a mouse in the blower motor or something like that. I've seen a rabbit uh, got caught in the belts one time. That one was kind of kind of like, ugh, poor rabbit. Yeah, um, I've not seen anything like real, real terrible. I've seen a few wrecked cars where there was blood on seats and shit like that. Uh, I don't know. I guess that's probably about the most depressing thing I've ever seen working on them. That was back when I did body work, though. The worst kind of work you could probably do that deals with cars has got to be detailing. That shit sucks. Like, no joke, if you work around some detailers, you go buy them, like, a drink or something. <laughs> Ooh. You know, I'm, I want to hit a more aggressive turn, but at the same time, I don't have any, like, any good communication satellites, so I have to make sure that I stay, like, line of sight to Kerbal uh, Space Center. Normally, I would be at about 45 degrees at uh, 10,000 meters. All right. Moment of truth. I should have probably rode that one up, huh? Yeah, I probably should have. Probably should have rode it up. Oh, I did detailing for a little bit. Uh, I went and joined the Marines, and they told me I was too blind to be useful, so I came back, and that was the first job that, uh, yeah, I probably should have put some winglets on there. Uh, when I came back, that was the first job that I could get was detailing, and I did it for like six months, and that was, I was about the worst. Doing that job gets depressing. And tell you the truth, uh, I really wasn't thinking super hard, or I would have just rode the main booster up over the atmosphere. However, I do think I, I might be able to actually get to orbit this time.
I managed to fuck it up just right. This has got to be one of my favorite ways to deploy satellites, though. If you can just get them to fit in here. It takes a little bit of creativity designing them, though. I won't lie. Tell you the truth, I'm not sure I have RCS that would be strong enough to control that SRB. Like, I've not got any RCS that's got a power over one. Hell, for the main booster, I had to stack five doubles. Like, five doubles stack. I had to stack five of them on each side just to get it to be able to start turning. I probably don't have it. I probably need a stronger engine right here. I feel like I design like I've got a thousand hours in the game, but I fly like I've got ten hours in the game. Part of me, part of me wants to say it's probably my fault that I didn't listen to Scott Manley well enough. Yeah, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and give up on this one. I know I'm not going to make it. I'm going to build another one. But this time, I'm going to ride the main booster all the way up out of the atmosphere. Get it turned sideways. And then, and only then, I'm going to hit that kick stage. I'm also going to make sure that the root part is the little module or little command module I stuck in the commsat deployer part that way I don't have to do all this switching vehicles and all that the image kind of looks like an eyeball up close at really low resolution All the way down here. I think version 3. 
I think that's the right one. Man, <laughs> scrolling through parts is like the made most significant time sink in this game. So yeah, this time I'm going to ride the booster all the way up and then I'll get it pointed sideways and then I don't I don't I never have the patience to sit and make custom groups just cuz I've got like so freaking many mods that add so many parts. Like I'm barely into the tech tree and I I'm losing track of where stuff is what I really like to do is try and develop like I'll try and make a booster that I can then just stick any payload on and then if I need if I need more payload capacity I'll just make a bigger booster and I'll just reuse that for everything I try to do it like the SpaceX model that way, all I need to do is just, oh, pull this booster out, stick it on the bottom, and go. I don't know why I'm struggling so much for this playthrough either. Like yesterday, it took me 10 launches just to make orbit. Almost made me feel bad. Night vision goggles? Amazon, my dude. Or Google. I'm sure you can find them on the internet. Uh, to tell you the truth, I could probably ask my stepbrother to check back in with me tomorrow, and I will let you know where you can get some night vision goggles. Get you some good nogs. Kings, what do you mean? Alright, don't let me forget, I'm riding the booster all the way to space this time. Well, I mean, if there's not a purpose for wearing it, I'd say you probably kind of are LARPing. But, uh, I mean, if... If bullets are getting shot, you might as well have the shit on. I would say going to like protests and riots and shit with a vest on probably isn't the thing to do. Like, ooh, I don't want to get real political or nothing. But, uh, 
where I'm from, if you showed up to a protest or even met a cop holding a gun, you'd probably have some cuffs thrown on you. Hey, Meal Team 6 was my favorite one that I heard. <laughs> Thought Meal Team 6 was freaking hilarious. They really fruck they really do, man. Like don't Why do you why would you bring a gun? You expect things to go wrong. Okay, you bring a gun is only going to make things go wrong faster and like not to say that the police are innocent in it because they don't need to show up in riot gear because that's just going to escalate their whole thing was supposed to be de-escalation what'd you uncover lizard let me know let's change the topic here <laughs> I'm not going to stage. I am riding the booster to orbit or to space. Yeah, that would be my my tip too. Run some laps, dude. Do some cardio. That'll serve you better. Cuz I promise when I run up on you I'll I'll be able I'll be able to keep my breath going. Like I ain't gonna get gassed out real fast. I promise. I've put them miles on my feet. Hell, even if you don't want to get ready, go do some running. It's good for you. I might have a little bit of a skewed view on the whole running thing, though. Because I... Yeah. Yoga, too, dude. Yoga's the shit. I, I fucking hate running, too, man. But it is great for losing weight. Like, I, I have lost 60 pounds from the heaviest I've ever been. Lost 60 pounds in about a year. Dude... I have seen some beefy, burly motherfuckers go and try and do yoga and then gas out halfway through because they, they just cannot do it. They're all about strong and shit. Yeah, strong's nice, but can you actually move? Can you use all that muscle? That's something my fucking high school coach was all about was functional muscle. Being able to actually use the muscle you have on your body. Yoga is a great way to build muscle, too. They are, dude. Some of the strongest people I've ever met are gymnasts. People that do all the flips and shit. Some of the strongest people. Because... Well, yeah. If they really cared about mental health, then everybody would be having... Free mental health screenings and healthcare would be free. And I'm having problems again. Yeah, though, healthcare would be free if they cared about mental health. Like, that's something I've struggled with a ton in my life. Tell you the truth, I think three things would go really, really well for this country to really 
help people. Free health care, free education, universal basic income so that you can get a house and food. You want like video games or a car or something, go get a job and, and, and work. Other than that, like I don't see why we're not doing this. I think it'd help a lot of people. What's the argument against it? Oh, someone might take advantage of it. Someone take advantage of everything. I'm going to call that an invalid argument. And I'm also going to say that it, I fucked this up again. I really don't have a problem talking about mental health. Like, I've done, I've seen some traumatic shit. I've been through a lot of traumatic shit. And I've tried killing myself a few times. Shit's gotten better. I, I, I already know that I did. Like, I have no doubt I did. On the mental health thing, I'm honestly not super sure that it gets better, but I do feel like you can get the people around you better at helping you through it. You know, if I did fuck this up again, I've already got another one getting built. <laughs> I've, I've been thinking I might redo the mod site for this and restart, because right now it's kind of a mess. Yep. Screwed that one up. It's alright. I've got the solution. It's a very Kerbal solution. There's that eyeball again. There's the pupil. That, that guy needs some glasses. Promise. See? Yeah. Boom. Already being built. I knew I was going to mess it up. I probably ought to fix the name of this one too. The view is supposed to be for like the number of vehicle. I think I'm on five. I was hoping that I uh, I would have done it by by the fifth launch. <laughs> So, my very Kerbal-ish solution. More rockets.
and I'm gonna do some thins too. Actually, I'm not gonna do fins, but I am gonna set the root part to be that fuel tank. That way I don't gotta be switching vehicle or yeah, switching vehicles. And five because I'm terrible. Um yeah, I'll still call that block one. Yeah. Save. Save. Good to go. I don't think the rocket looks that bad. But I have made some true abominations in Kerbal. Yo. A great way to uh, to deal with that problem. Uh, there is actually a program, I'm trying to remember what it's called, where you can specify specify by program what comes out of what audio output. Um, something I do is I'll have like I've got an iPad and an Xbox 360 in here. Uh, I'll switch one of my monitors from my PC to the Xbox 360 and I've got a bot of audio mixer over here too with four channels in one out and uh, it works pretty well or you can the audio mixer eh, the audio mixer is really the star there because you can have it separates the audio channels coming in so you can have multiple devices coming in and it goes out it it took me an embarrassingly long amount of time to come to that solution. Yeah, it it's the coolest freaking thing probably in this freaking game room. VR headset be damned. It's the audio mixer, it's the coolest thing. Got a question for you guys. Any VR games that you think would make a good game to stream? I shouldn't be looking at the ground. Hey, I actually managed to hit it. Control from here. Why are you looking at the ground?
see if I can't hit that one. Control from here. Why are all of these looking at the frickin' ground? I feel like that is what is causing me problems. Is that they're all facing the wrong way. I'm not going to launch this one. I'm going to go fix that. I have no idea why they're facing the wrong way either. I'm going to go fix this problem. Well, I'm glad that I I think I might have finally figured out my problem. But I might need to restart KSP. Does KSP still have the memory leak in it? Alright, dude. Good luck, man. I figured out my problem is I had these upside down. Hey, thanks for following too, dude. I can manage to actually get this thing to land now. You're not to land. The hell am I saying? But I can get to orbit. Now that shit's not trying to fly backwards. And in fact, I want to make this one a little bit easier to actually grab.
All right. Well, while that's doing that, I am going to restart Kerbal Space Program to get that memory leak taken care of, and I will be right back.
you still here? My dude, Dirt Merchant, flying a fantastic looking plane. Ooh, wee, is that thing sexy.
ignore the other one. It's not important. All right. So, hopefully, figured out what my control problem was. So, we should hopefully be able to get all the way to orbit without a problem this time. Control from here, facing the right way. Let's do this. Get this set up before I launch. I'm going to get this back around over here. So that when I am in the air, I for sure got some sort of communication link back to KSC. Full throttle. Get out of here. I've got faith this time. going up into the suns.
is going to be locked about there the whole way up. Might drop it to 60. Go see how it goes. Feeling good this time. I'm gonna go ahead and ditch those fins. Got enough gimbal authority, I can make it work. leave a lock at 60. We getting out of here this time. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Let's just hang on to her. Now let's point right in it. And let's hit it. The spin is working. Oh yeah, eh. The spin is working, eh. So, the spin didn't work as well as I had hoped. I might maybe be okay though.
part of me starting to think maybe I should derate that kick stage. But time to apple apps. This is slowing down. I might maybe have it this time. sitting like this burning for a minute. For a hot minute. So what harm is there in speeding it up? Because I probably didn't make it this time either. I really need to kick stage to probably push me sideways. Yeah, I'm not going to get it this time either. Just go ahead and abandon it. I'm going to derate the kick stage to about 75% power. All right. I will eventually make this work. Oh, eight way. So two thirteen load. Uh, no, not that. I want to take some of the power out of her. I 
I only need one. That'll do, pig. That'll do. Now then, another problem I've been having is that when I separate those, that frickin' fairing gets in my way. Alright, so that will be vehicle 6, save, launch, and because I don't believe in myself, number 7, start building all those. I'm not worried about your frickin' electrical charge. Roll it on out. I'm hoping derating that uh, kick stage helps. Hopefully it's not so much power that it's uncontrollable now. This will probably be my last attempt tonight. So if I don't make it this time, well, I didn't make it today I guess. I'm not going to keep trying. Facing down again. Um, where's the one I put on the outside specifically to be accessible so I wouldn't have to... Oh. Maybe I just can't... Ah, uh, fuck. Alright, well, I guess I'm gonna roll this one back, because I forgot to save it with all, of the, with all the control pods facing the right way. So that's my fault. But catching it now saves me from wasting a bunch of time and money. So, recover, edit, that one's going to need to be updated as well. Alright, so let's get all these open back up real quick.
so you are going to go on the outside and you're going to face the right way up this time. And you are going to go down here and you're going to face the right way up. Same for all three of you. I ain't going to do this upside down shit. Save that. Overwrite. Save edits. Takes three days just to flip those? Really? Or the, is the bolt pattern not like symmetric or something? Hold up. That one up there. And I need to edit this one too. I'm going to take the easy way out with this one and just load the last one I made. B6. Yeah. Load and then change back to 7 up here. save edits. <coughs> All right, so that's in the right order. I'm going to try and boost the speed of that one. We, I failed so many times. I've got, I've got a ton of science points. Yeah, I'm going to go for those. All right. Finish that up. Roll that one out. The launch should go nice and smoothly this time. Should make it all the way to orbit without much problem, without much fuss. Should be good to go. Before I 
E and hit execute on that. Control from here. Execute. Full throttle. I've got faith this time. I think I'm going to make it. Got so much faith, I'm not even going to leave the vents on. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of them. Fens crashing. <laughs> Should start running smoother as I start getting rid of parts. I did not make sure. Ah, way on down there. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to use that for an uplink back to KSC. and get this ready to uh, ride up to orbit and then separate and then fire. Go and do this as properly as possible. this time. this thing up. Actually, fuck that. Get separated first. Nice and steady. Hit it. Oh god. Please don't break my satellites. Please don't break my satellites up there. I think I'm alright. Hey, 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 I think that might have been the answer. 
just derate the ever living hell out of that booster. We're going to make it to orbit this time. So now I'm just going to go ahead and point at the horizon. Actually, I'm going to tilt it up about 15. Just because I know the engine in here is going to need that time lofted up in the air to actually actually circularize. I'm going to go ahead and set it to 30. Hey, 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 almost perfectly where I was wanting it. <clears throat> and I'm going to go ahead and light this thing off. I think I've got it. I'm really, really hoping I do. I'm hoping I've given it enough time to to circularize. I'm getting the scary feeling that I haven't. Why do, you, why do you always do that? I'm not sure this is the one either. I think I might need to throw it up even higher. Nah, not gonna make it. I can already tell. Fly, my little birdies. Just a complete waste of time, to be honest. Well, I didn't make it tonight. I'll try again tomorrow or the next time. Thanks for watching. So long.